over Satan's authority. Satan has been granted some authority through him tricking Eve. He got Eve and Adam to give up authority in the earth. And Adam lost the authority, went into the fall, and Satan now takes that authority because he got it through a transaction. Adam gave up his will. He changed his will from following the Most High, and he decided to follow what his wife said, which she was tripped by the three roots, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. What do you mean? She saw the fruit that it looked good, right? That's the lust of the eye. Then she desired to have it to eat. That's the lust of the flesh. And then she said, I'll be like God. The, de the devil said, you'll be like God. That's pride. You see all three of those roots right there. That's how Satan deals. Now he'll hide it behind something. He'll, he'll put that root under an, an appearance. That's why when I tell people the definition for truth, truth is reality that lies at the basis of an appearance. That means truth is at the bottom of the appearance. It is the foundation for whatever you see. For every skyscraper you see, underneath it is a whole bunch of foundation. You don't see the foundation. But if you move that foundation from that skyscraper, you're going to see some buildings falling. What am I trying to say? You see me here tonight teaching. And, and, I'm, and then the appearance is a man teaching the truth, which is true. But the foundation under me is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the foundation. I can die and stop breathing, but that power will always exist, and it could use another man. But right now, it's using me. That truth that's underneath, undergirding me, the under support, the essence. All right, so I want to show you this. So we have power over the power, the, over the power of the enemy. We have authority, exousia, over the dunamis of the enemy. What's dunamis? Dunamis deals with mighty works. It deals with mighty works. Works. You call it deeds. That's what you have power over. I'm going to show you. Verse number Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Those two are not going to agree. Now, when it says the flesh, it's not talking about the membrane. Membrane and skin and all of that. Your teeth. It's not talking about that. That's your house. It's going to do, it's going to do whatever the mind tells it. What it's talking about when he says that we walk not after the flesh, it's talking about the flesh will. The flesh will without, without, without being controlled by the Holy Spirit will operate out of those three roots. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Now here's some of the works, and this is what we have authority over. Not you going and taking Satan off his throne and putting him in hell. You don't have that authority. Christ, the, 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 the I am is going to do that. But even I am is granted him a season. And one of the reasons why he has that season is because we were given authority on this earth. We were supposed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. We were supposed to rule on this earth. But we gave it up before one child could be brought forth through procreation. Adam and Eve gave up the authority. So when Satan showed up in the wilderness in Luke chapter 4, he says to the devil, all these things I will give you if you will bow down and worship me, for they were delivered to me. Who delivered it to him? Adam delivered it to him. Because he was the authority, and he had to help me, and they together were supposed to dominate and rule, but they gave the authority up to Satan. So he has a legal right here. But there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. He does not have a legal right there. So that's why this one is going to be destroyed and you look forward to a new earth. But so many saints are looking for no new earth. They got money down here. They got uh, houses and, and beach homes and all of this, even in the church world. They got their jets and all of this. They're not ready to leave this earth, but ready or not. We sing a song back in the, in the South, Billy, Billy Martin, 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 pick it in the cotton, cotton, cotton. Are you ready? And we'll play hide and go seek. Whether you're ready or not. The devil's getting ready into a season, or should I say, the season has come where the devil has been granted certain authority. And a part of it is to test you to see who really loves the most high. He's going to use those three things against us. That's why you got to do what the scripture says. I think it's in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. I get the first Corinthians 7 and 1. I get the first and second sometimes mixed up. Having therefore these promises. Let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, 
perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If you don't do that, you're going to be deceived. If you allow the root of pride, if you allow the root of the lust of flesh, if you allow the root of the lust of the eye to dwell in your heart, Satan has a matching card. He has something that in the last days he's going to be able to use against you. That's why it's time now to search your heart. Look inside and see what's really going on. Don't let men build you up telling you you're great. When you look inside, you see some mess, you see some rot, dig out the rot. Tear down anything that's not of the most high. And let the Holy Ghost rebuild. What do you mean? Be, what do you mean, Baker? What do you mean, Shell? Rebuild means to renovate. What do you mean renovate? Be transformed. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed. By what? The renewing of your mind. People argue over salvation, but they make it a one-dimensional thing, a one thing. No, salvation got different sides to it. Your eternal salvation was taken care of by Yeshua HaMashiach, the woman knows Jesus Christ. And as long as you want to stay in the kingdom and follow him, you can't lose it. As long as you want to stay in the kingdom and follow him, listen to me carefully, you won't lose it. As long as you learn of him, inquire of him, follow him, and excel in following him, you won't lose it. But if you him her around, and let him get so far ahead and you way back here. The devil is going to come as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's going to snatch you out. Now you can let them teach whatever they want to teach. The scripture says if you deny him, he'll deny you. But people don't want to teach this. He's not going to deny himself. No. But, he, but you... If you tell him, I want you, Christ, and I give my life to you, and six months later, you look at the devil and say, well, you know, I, hey, because of grace, you know, I mean, I, you know, I just want to, whatever people say, get my groove on, whatever. And you go into sin, knowing that it's sin, knowing before you do it, it's sin, that thing become a habitual thing. And just because people said you were baptized six months ago, you thinking you're going to break through heaven, having lust of the flesh and pride of life, dominating your life, wake up. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Why would he let you live as a Christian in the works of the devil after he gave his son on the cross? Let's get to this. So we go. So we, we have authority granted to us by Christ over the dunamis of the devil. We have jurisdiction over the works of the devil. We do not have jurisdiction over the devil. I need to make this clear. I don't care what they're teaching you in your churches. You ain't no match for the devil. Listen to me. Jude talks about this when he wrote, and I think Peter as well, that even when they dealt with certain beings, you got to be careful how you're dealing. You don't go in there by yourself. You don't go in there by that, like that. And even if you go in the name of Jesus, you can't go tell the devil, I command you right now to get off your throne. I'm going to cast you down to hell. You do not have that authority. The Most High is going to do that. He has a season, the devil does. And what he's going to do, he's going to wear out the saints. How about that? That's what the scripture teaches. The devil is going to kill a lot of saints in these last days. The most high know it. And a lot of those saints, is all that death is going to be is a graduation for them to go home. But because the church is so earthly minded, they're like, oh, sister so-and-so died. Oh, brother so-and-so, he got his head cut off. Okay, I understand you crying because you're going to miss him physically. But do you not really know what just happened? Do you not know really... Know what just happened when your brother's head was cut off? He went into the presence of the Most High. You don't weep for him spiritually. And in fact, you rejoice. The Bible said precious, I believe, in the sight of the Most High is the death of his saints. Why? Because they're coming home. But the devil's going to take a lot of people out. But this man-made church system gospel just want us to live here forever. So earthbound. This place is going to be destroyed. It's going to be folded up like an envelope. Well, probably not exactly like an envelope, but maybe a garment, but it's going to be folded up. It's going to be burnt. You fall in love with it if you won't. The Bible says, blessed are the meek, for they should inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of God. That earth that he's talking about there because of meek, and that kingdom that he's talking about because of the poor in spirit, is not, if it's this earth, we don't, that ain't no real treasure. There's a new heaven and a new earth. That's where I'm going. You ain't going to trick me with your sorceries, doctrines that, that come from these societies, secret societies and all of this. People trying to live forever here in this earth. Leave me alone. 
I want the body he gave me. I want to breathe until the last breath, and then I go home. But I don't want to go home until he finished with me. I tell my family, and when I say this, I'm talking about my spiritual family, the ones I uh, fellowship with. I tell them that. I want to finish strong. His job is to keep me from finishing strong. But his problem is, number one, Christ is on my side. And I believe Christ. And then he's giving me another asset. He's giving me a body of believers. I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. He put me here to use words to empower people. That's what fathers do. Pa fathers give a seed. What is the seed that the, that the Most High has given to a natural man in the earth who will act like a father type? Let me stop to make sure you understand something. I am not a spiritual father. You got one spiritual father. That's the I am. But what the I am, do, I am does is prepare men who will let him prepare him and teach them how to love as a father to make up the difference in people's lives who never had a father. Just because a person is 50 or 60 years old, if they've never experienced the love of a father, never experienced uh, uh, protection, somebody praying for you, somebody teaching you, somebody loving you, somebody being an example of a man, every boy, every girl should experience that. They have a right to that. Yet under this system of pride and lust, we've snatched the father out of homes. A lot of our problems have to do with the fathers being missing. Many times the mothers are there, but the mothers are the carrier of the seed. The father is the producer of the seed. Oh, I feel the presence of the Most High. So in the realm of the spirit, the love of Ahia, the Most High, he finds men. And he says, now you love my people. They're not your people. But in that human body, I will allow you to serve as an example. You represent me. You show them my love, my joy, my peace. You counsel them and give them wisdom. It's up to them what they do with it. But I want them to experience what it's like to have a love of a father. I grew up without one. I didn't know him until I was 27 years old. And every father that was in my life, he, it's like he ensured they had weakness. My first father, my granddaddy, he was blind. So he could only help me a little bit. Then I, my, 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 my stepdad, he had inabilities and things where he couldn't be a full father. What was the most high doing? He, at the age of 17, November 1983, he turned my heart toward the father. And he taught this young country boy from Georgia how to be a father. Married at age 18. He taught me how to be a husband. Never cheated on my wife. To this day, I don't never, that I know of, I can remember, cursed her. I used words to dog her. Why? Because as a man, you've been, a, you've been given the authority to bless with your words. But if you're not a holy man, you will curse with your words. And that's what's happened to so many, including many brothers and sisters that are in the church today. They have never felt the love of a father. The words that came out of the mouth of the authorities in their life, you were no good. You're just like your mama. You ain't going to never be nothing. The high, a higher hears that. So he'll take men like me. I'm not the only one. And he said, now get down there that earth. I ain't going to give you a daddy. Why? So you can know what it feels like not to have one. So when you go into that prison and that young girl is sitting over there abused and, 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 and mistreated and neglected and that young boy is sitting over there untrained and, and they're acting out, but they're acting out, son, because they were not given the basic things that they needed to be a well-balanced child. Now get in that prison. Open your mouth. And I will go in there. I will sing a song. I will sing a song to them as a, that the Spirit taught me. And then I begin to teach them by the Spirit's leading. And I look at those young ladies and tell them, you're a princess. They look at me like, what in the world's wrong with you? Me a princess? Look at me. Look at me. I'm in RYDC now, the Regional Youth Detention Center, because I stole somebody's car, sir. You calling me a, a princess? A young boy sitting over there saying, man, you are to be honorable. Honorable? What is that? They don't know why. Because the men in their life use curses. What do you mean curses? Shep, they spoke evil of them. But the day is over for the Most High's people not being told who they are. He's anointed me to look inside. I may not see everything, but if I see something inside of you, I'm going to look at it. And if that thing that's out the Most High, I'm going to declare it to you. I'm going to tell you you're a prince. I'm going to tell you you're a, prin you a princess. Why? Because that's your inheritance. You deserve to know that you've been created 
to operate in royalty. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him that's called you out of darkness. And I come against that enemy in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and command him to loose the hole around you. Now that he gives me the authority to do. I can't put him in hell, but I can tell that demon to back off. You ain't trash. No, you're not. Some man defining you by your body and your figure, and you feeling that that's all you got, so you give up what you got to him, Day over for that when you meet Shep. Now, it's up to you what you do with it. But Shep going to tell you, you are a princess. You are diamond. You are precious. You are pure if you've been brought into the kingdom of the Most High. The guy that's whistling at you and telling you how fine you are, he don't know who he is. He's been controlled by a spirit of lust. He's a predator. Man could be one or two things. One or two things. He's going to be a protector. That's the father type. Or he's going to be a predator. He's going to be one of the two. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to do what I can as, 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 as the Most High has given me this anointing. Again, I'm nobody's spiritual father. High is your spiritual father. But I've been gifted by the Most High as a pastor and a teacher to speak words. That's what fathers do. When Abraham blessed Isaac, He's used words because the word blessed means to speak words. Your true inheritance is not the money you get. Your true inheritance is not the money you get. This is where the church got to wake up. Anyway, before I go on with that other part, let's look at Galatians 5, 19. Here's what you have authority over when you're dealing with the devil. Listen carefully. Ephesians, uh, Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the devil are manifest. What does that mean? The root will produce the appearance. What is the appearance? He's going to show you the appearance. These are, which are these? From the root of pride, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, going to come forth adultery. That's a man that's married, sleeping with someone else that's married, or someone else that's single. Because he's married, that's adultery. Same thing with the woman. Fornication. That's where we get the word pornography from. The Greek word, uh, I say pornago, I may mispronounce it, but... Pornography. It's close to pornography. That's where fornication comes from. That's, that is sex outside of the bonds of marriage. I don't care how much you love the person. I don't care how much you say, and people got a way of trying to change the scripture. Well, you know, that's man-made. Uh, you mind. You know you mind. I ain't got to get no, I ain't got to get no license. You mind. Why you, people, people get license for the dog. You got license to drive a car. You got license to shoot a weapon. You got license to go fishing. You need to tell me you can't get a license to love a woman for the rest of your life? And if you're a sister in that situation, get yourself up out of there. He don't love you. He don't truly love you if he don't respect you enough to make you one with him. And if he'll do it by sleeping with you not being married, he will sleep with another woman that's not married. Oh, yes, he can. So the works are adultery. Fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, uncontrolled, man. There, there are people that can't control themselves. They just can't get it. Let's keep going. Idolatry. We got a lot of that in the church. Yes, we do. You walk into a lot of these churches and on the wall, you got a picture of a man they call Jesus. I don't want to get into that. That ain't how he looked. See, that's not a ruddy colored person. Christ came from the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, if you read Jeremiah, Lamentations, Song of Song, it tells you how they look. They didn't look like that. And even if you did put somebody up there that was ruddy, you still it's in idolatry because you don't know that Christ had the same features. So don't mess with that. Don't mess with trying to get a picture of him. Don't put nothing on your cross that you got and nothing else. That's idolatry. Make no graven image of him. I don't care if the church made it fancy and sophisticated. I'm an old school teacher. What do I mean old school? I want to go back to the early church. They didn't have all these emblems like we do to represent God. We take things too far. Yeah, take it too far. I, go find the early church walking around with crosses around the neck and all the rest of it. You want to know why they didn't have to do that? Because they walked in the spirit. And from the root of righteousness will come forth love, joy, peace. That's Christ.
You can wear a, a necklace all day. Earrings with a cross on it, a ring, bracelet, all that. that, that what is that? That ain't that what the Bible talking about. And people need to study the origin. I've taught on this. If you want to know, go you go to YouTube, look at my, the channels there. I've taught on the cross, what it really means when Christ is talking about the cross. Okay? He ain't doing what some people think he's doing. All right? I ain't going to get into that. But he's talking about his death on the cross. That's the relevance. That's what we should be looking at. He died on the cross. No, we should not worship the being. But a lot of people worship the, the symbol. When he's talking about take up your cross, he ain't talking about taking up a T and put it on your back. He's talking about taking up the burden that comes to a man that would go forth to act like me. If you, hey, the scripture saying, yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not all they that wear a cross, not all they that put a cross on their back. He's not talking about the being. He's talking figuratively. I ain't going to get into that. But if you go get the history, you'll find out. When he's talking about that, it's a stake, a tree. It, it, it dealt with it, it. But the glory don't go to that wood. Stop worshiping that wood. You make that wood an idol. You make that tea an idol. That tea, if you go study it, goes way before Christian days. That tea is the mystic towel. T-A-U. What is the mystic towel? Stands for Tammuz. Who was Tammuz? The sun god reborn under the pagan deities. So that cross you're putting on, that T, they're in the church. The first church didn't have that. That came as the Constantine and the Roman church got involved. And they allowed all these people to come in and bring their pagan symbols and all of that. And they anointed it pagan and made it Christian. They Christianized it. You feel better because you got a T around your neck? You better feel better because you got the cross. You got the, 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 the actual image of the one that died on the cross, his character in you. We got to elevate our minds. Teachers out there, pastors out there, these apostles, I, I cry out to you. Get before him and let him teach you so you can teach the people. Think deception is coming. Thick deception. And when you stand before him, if you got these functions and you didn't do right by it, you're going to be judged. What I teach, you can't teach and be liked by everybody. You'll be liked by people that want it, and that's the people that I want to come my way. I, even when I pastored in the local churches, you know, I wasn't interested in just having a whole bunch of people in the church. Quantity, quantity. No, I want quality. Where's the humble? Where's the focus? Where's the hungry? Most high, sit in my way. I teach your people, sit in my way. I won't get them to fall in love with me and make me an idol. I'll point them to you. And anybody that follows, the scripture says, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. The Hebrew word, the Greek word for follow there is to imitate. He put leaders before you. That's what leaders do. They guide, right? They guide you till you become mature and strong. But if that person that's guiding as a natural, as a pastor or teacher, he starts guiding away from Christ, and you see all of a sudden he's going, he's going to the left and Christ is going straight, you better follow Christ. You better unhitch your wagon. Leadership is a responsibility. Surely people will follow you. I understand that. But you follow me as I follow Christ. I'm a man. I put on my pants. Like men put on their pants. I eat. The difference with me is I humble myself to yield myself to the flame. Oh, set your flame upon this candle, Most High. So that means shine in a dark world and every gift you've given me. So to the woman that's been raped, and in some churches, she probably got to go to the same church with the man that raped her because he probably is a part of the first family. And she got to endure that mess. The victims get blamed. Where are the voices? Where are the father types that arise up and said, it wasn't your fault, but you forgive him and receive the anointing to go forth and be the woman that the Most High called you. That's what a name does. 
Men, listen to me out there. One of the greatest things honor's given to you is the ability to look at something, see what it is, and call it out. Because if you don't call it out, the devil going to twist it and he going to call it out. He'll call her fine when you should be calling her royal. He'll call her sexy when you should be calling her beautiful in, in, in spirit, in soul. And she may be beautiful in body. But you go deeper than that external. The most high getting ready to pluck up. I see it even as I'm talking. He getting ready to pluck people up out of position. Yes, he is. He getting ready to snatch. He's tired of it. Now, hear me now. He's tired. You remember?